Also, I was telling you, see here, it says 10 amps. Third horsepower, 10 amps, 120 volts AC. Half horsepower at 240 volts, 10 amps AC. So, a third horsepower at 120 volts is going to pull close around that. And then a half a horsepower at 240 volts, even though half a, half a horsepower is larger than a third horsepower, since you're running it at higher voltage, 240 volts, you're not going to pull more amps. The higher the voltage, the less amps you pull, or voltage, the more amps you pull. So if we had a third horsepower at 120 volts and a half a horsepower at 120 volts, we couldn't use this relay. It's gonna pull more than 10 amps, gonna melt the relay, unless we have an inline fuse at 10 amps that would trip or pop, blow. That's how relays work. So we just talked about relays. See this relay is normally open. Here's your coil, 13 and 14. I'm controlling this with a switch kind of like that drawing I showed you. So you can see I have a 120 volt source here. This is ground, this is neutral. 120 volts hot going to, let's say it's a light switch. When I close this light switch, it's gonna energize the coil, turn the light on. At the same time, because remember the relay we saw had two, had a normally open and normally closed function. This one is normally closed this one's normally open. When I add power, the voltage is gonna to go to the coil. As long as our neutral's hooked up, this is actually going to magnetize and close the circuit, okay? So you saw how that one lit up. So what this is doing, you have 120 volts energizing the coil. You see the light come on. The neutral goes back to the neutral. Now the light, we have it tied in to 120 volts as well. Now, if this neutral right here was not, if I deleted that, took it out, this light would turn off. You have to have a hot neutral for the light to work. You can see the flow of electricity. 120 volts goes through the relay, flows through the light, and then the neutral returns it back down to the neutral bar. This one activated and stopped having power. You can see the power is right here, but it doesn't go through to the relay. I'm gonna click this again. You can see how the normally closed state, the voltage goes through it and it loops up, okay? Now, what I did on this next one, let's say you have a 24 volt coil, but you have a 120 volt light. 120 volts, you have ground, you have your neutral. So this is gonna come from your electric panel. This one, you'll be feeding it from your electric panel, but this transformer will transform it down to 24 volts. The reason why is because if you have a 24 volt coil and you use 120 volts, it's gonna blow your coil up. But a lot of times on PLCs, car washes, RO units, a lot of different computer controlling systems, 24 volts is usually what they control everything with, DC voltage or AC voltage, but it's usually low volt, and then they'll send the high voltage out. So let's close this one. We're gonna close this coil with 24 volts. It's gonna act the same as this 120 volt one did. You see how that closed it? Now we have the light lit up, but the light is lit up with 120 volts, not the 24 volts. Remember the coil, the voltage on these never interferes with the voltage in the coil. These, re these contacts inside here are separate from the coil. You have to see what the coil is, then you can run your voltage to it. So you can see how the flow of electricity works. Right now the reason why this is flowing through the light bulb and back, this is on the normally closed pins of a relay. On this relay I showed you, Remember, read the back of the relays, you'll see the numbers, read the sides of them, you'll see that. Always be very careful when you're working with voltage. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, have a good day.